So we've talked about this main stripe down here, the main sequence, the burning hydrogen in their core. But there's a lot of other things going on here. There's some things down there and up there. There's actually a whole entire branches up here. Now, it actually also depends on not just what the star is, but where the star lies, right? Does it go this way? You know, we kind of know the sun and the path the sun goes. Yeah, so for the sun, it starts in the main sequence, spends you know, nine, 10 billion years on there, and then up, down, up, down, oof. And, and, th and these are really short periods, right? A billion years, literally a second or two, 100 million years, less than that. So really, most of its life is this nine billion year. So that's so, kind of what yeah. this branch is up here. But then you've also got all the stars at other points. That's right. Now, the stars down the bottom of the main sequence, the red and the brown dwarfs, don't really do much. They They're still really, on the main sequence yes. and will be for many, many billions, tens of billions of years to come. But the more massive stars, what do they do? Do they also jump off over the side? Or they they the surely have changed this time, right? As we can believe, yes, okay, if these are going to last for uh, 100 billion years, as we saw previously, okay, no much change. But these were only lasting 10 million years. Surely they have to evolve off this diagram, or at least off this main sequence. And it's very confusing to try and study this because you get stars of different compositions yep. and masses and ages all jumping around in funny places. If you see a star there, was it a star down here that's recently come up there or a star over there or what's going on? Yep. And the obvious way to sort this out is to use star clusters. So here is a star cluster. Um, and this is, as we've said many times, is a bunch of stars all born from the same giant molecular cloud at the same time. And that's so by taking out the age factor, you're not disentangling. It's just a younger star uh, that's happened to be blue or an older star that's already gone through uh, hydrogen burning and now helium burning. So if we find a cluster, we know they're all the same age and the same composition because yep. they're made out of the same primordial gas cloud. And so we can get a pure test of mass. The only thing that's varying is some are more massive than others. Yep. And so what we can do, and um, it's pretty, so I've got to put some pictures of star clusters in. But so all of these clusters are, are these stars are the same age. So when we see blue versus red, as we've talked about, that's not necessarily saying they're older. Some of these will be some of those young or those hotter stars, more massive stars, and other of these will be some of those smaller, cooler stars. So what we can do is we can plot an HR diagram for a cluster. Okay. And in fact, this is data from Gaia for lots of different clusters, and they're color coded by age. So the youngest ones are deep blue, and there may be coming up to 100 million years, yep. and the oldest ones, which are several billion years old, are red. Yep. So what can we see? So down here at the bottom, they're all lying along the main sequence. So these are all the dwarf stars. Even the oldest class is only a few billion years, so the uh, KM dwarfs are still sitting on the main sequence just fine. That's right, and a lot of these young stars are hanging out here at the bottom. Yep, but then when you go up to the top here, where the youngest cluster, the dark blue, goes all the way up to here. That's right. But as you get to older ones, it doesn't seem to get quite so far up. So like the yellow only gets up to there, and the orange only up to there, and the red up to there. So there seems to be these limits to, as you get to these older stars, where they stop. Yes, yeah, so the main sequence seems to end, and as the cluster gets older, that ending point moves down. Yep. So what's happening, though, with these things that are shooting off? Well, presumably what's happening is these ones up here are the most massive stars. Yes, so those O stars. And so as we saw earlier, they don't last very long on the main sequence. Yep. So before very long, they've all disappeared off. Where do they go? Well, I can see one dark blue one over there. But that's about it. <laughs> so the, um, but, you know, probably, there aren't very many of these stars to begin with. That's true. And they probably don't spend much time off playing giants. Yep. So maybe we're lucky to get even one over there. Yep. And then as you get to the less um, older clusters, it turns off a bit lower down, and now you start getting a few stars over here. Yeah, and we have one or two extreme stragglers, but you're right, there's just a few. So there's more than the blue, those extreme O stars. Yep. Um, These ones last a bit longer, so maybe yep. they've spent a bit more time as giants. When you get down to clusters that are more like a few billion years old, more like the age of the sun, yep. now you're seeing a very well-defined turn off. So we have more of these stars to measure, unlike with the O and B stars. They last longer, so we have a better chance at actually measuring them in this phase. And we know it goes through this phase because we know it, the sun does this. And we know for these stars, you get the, they, they uh, move along here as yep. they start um, burning, have an inert helium core with a hydrogen shell, then they become red giants and have the helium flash and move down. So we kind of understand the patterns around here. Yep. But to really get a good pattern of this, there just aren't enough stars in most of these clusters. The clusters like this are so, are open clusters. Yep. They might have a few hundred or maybe a thousand stars, but there are some much bigger clusters 
called globular clusters. Yep. Now, these aren't actually in the are in Milky Way. They're orbiting around it, yep. and they can have millions of stars. Uh, and they tend to be very old. So they're all the same age? Most, well, globular clusters are different age, but they're all pretty old. I mean, you're not going to find one that's only a billion years old. They might vary between 8 and 12 yep. billion years old or something like that. So you know these stars have had a chance to go through this process. And within one cluster, they're all the same age. Yep. And because there are so many stars, even those very rare things they do afterwards can be seen. Okay. So let's look at an HR diagram for a bunch of different globular clusters. So again, we have the, the bluer stars, which end up being the hotter stars and the redder yeah. stars. Now, the color coding here is different from the last one. Okay. So blue is actually the scale here is telling you the composition. Oh, so this is the other factor we've mentioned. Even though they're the same age, roughly, they have slightly different compositions? Yeah, so basically, it's telling you the ratio of iron to hydrogen. So a red one has lots of iron compared to hydrogen. That's still you know, far less than 1%. Yep. Uh, which means it's probably a star that's been enriched, the, the material that's been through lots of other stars first, whereas other ones have very, very little amounts of iron compared to hydrogen. But for the moment, we don't need to worry yep. about that too much. So what you've got is the main sequence, which goes on down there. We can't see it as far down because these things are further away. So, so in theory, this should keep going down if it was much closer. Yes, but um, even with Guy, you can't see details of most of the stars down the bottom. And what you see is the main sequence, then you get the turnoff. And this turnoff is what we were talking about in the previous yep. diagrams. Originally, the main sequence would have gone all the way up here. Yep. And as time went on, the most massive stars moved off and the next most massive moved off. And right now, it's these stars of just the right age to be, oh, I'm fed up with burning hydrogen in the core. I'll go and do something else. So previously, we, we saw a few at some of the smaller masses, but only a few. And now we have a very clear turnoff point. Yes. And then we can see as they move up here, we get a very definite turn off. And these are the stars that have got the helium core. Yep. And they go around here. That's when the helium core turns into a little white dwarf in the middle of the red star. Then they start, the hydrogen shell gets bigger and bigger and moves outwards as they go up the, what's called the red giant branch. Until they get to the top, that core of helium is just high enough to uh, hit the Chandra seeker limit and boom, so helium you get your flash, flash and it moves down to here. So, so they go up here from the main sequence. All of a sudden, oh, we're doing helium. We do a turn. We're starting to expand, expand, expand. Poof, we shoot back over here. Yes, and now they've got a carbon oxygen core with a helium yep. shell around it and a, uh, um, and possibly a hydrogen shell so, further out. Yep. And after some time over here, there's what's called the red clump and the horizontal branch. They, there's a location in here where they pulse a lot. So there's a yep. particular region in the diagram where stars pulse, which is very useful. Then eventually they'll start moving back up again when they start getting more and more shells moving outwards. Yep. Um, and then, boom, and off to, uh, that's the end of them off to big white dwarfs, which are too faint to see in something like this. So we can really see, even though this branch, this horizontal branch, is obviously lower than this, this is actually because this is one of those later stages of the evolution after it's become a red giant. That's right. Now, what I've got here is actually a movie based on computer models of stars, okay. showing how this HR diagram varies. So the blue line is the main sequence, yep. and the yellow dots are stars of different masses. So the ones at the top are the most massive stars, and as you go down, you get less and less massive stars. And we're going to change in age. So right now, we're talking about uh, 0. 0.0001 billion years. And we can see how all these things evolve. So, so all of these stars are, this is kind of a fake cluster. All of yes. these have the exact same age, which is very convenient. And we're going to see how they change as that age goes through. Yeah. So in principle, we could look at a cluster and watch the HR diagram for like 10 billion years and see what happens. Um, that's a bit beyond my patient span. <laughs> so, uh, that is dedication if you can pull it off. And we can kind of take it by looking at clusters of different yep. ages, but this is a computer simulation, so we're going to compress 20 billion years worth of evolution into a few seconds of the simulation here. So what happens? Now, these stars, to begin with, are not on the main sequence because they are still young and still contracting. Ah, it's that initial few beginning where they're contracting, getting smaller, getting cooler. Yes, and so they slowly, and the lower mass stars take longer to do that, so, um, I'm going to probably show this again so we can talk about the top and the bottom yes. of this. So let me go back and we'll show it again. Um, so yes, yeah, so these stars, the ones up, the, the more massive stars 
contract yep. until they're on the main sequence and start the hydrogen burning pretty quickly. So, because so, they have so much mass, it's pretty easy for so them. So, even at 0. 0.0001 giga years, these ones are already on the main sequence. These ones are still getting there. Yep. And the lower mass they are, the longer they take. So, That's the right. M dwarf stars take a very long time to shrink down. So, enough that to... shrinking period is much longer than that period we saw in the sun. That's right. So, you'll see these ones come down. But now, let's look at the top of the diagram. Yep. So, what we're going to see is the stars leaving the main sequence when they finish burning hydrogen in their core. So, to begin with, nothing much is happening here. So again, we're only going up by... Stars yeah. haven't died yet. Yep. But then they'll start dying, and then they start doing funny things. Yep. Now, to begin with, they're coming this way, they're getting very faint. They're probably collapsing straight to form a black hole. Oh. And then they start to come over here and become giants, and then you get different sorts of branches. So these are these horizontal branches that we see when they start to come back. And previous to that, all the stars end up forming black holes or neutron stars, but now they're coming over and forming white dwarfs. So, be, so previously, they were too, too big, massive, yep. too massive, did other things, but now they're turning that inside into that carbon-oxygen white fall, or in the center, yes. ending up here. So what happens is they, they do their giant stuff, blow most of the stuff away, and the core very rapidly cools down here, and then much more slowly cools along there, producing the white dwarfs. And then, assumingly, I guess it would just keep going on and on and on, but as we mm -hmm. talked about white dwarfs last for tens of billions of years, and we yes. don't measure that. And what you can see is the pattern is actually rather complicated over mm. here. You get different masses of stars doing different things, jumping around, jumping yeah, up and down. Yeah, the pattern is not the same depending on the mass. It's not just you shift this down. Most stars become much bigger and redder. Yep. The most massive ones don't get much more luminous because they were already pretty luminous to begin yep. with. But as you get lower and lower mass, you start getting much more luminous periods of, of brightness. And what's happening is that actually for the more massive stars, but for a mass star like our sun, the most it ever gets to is producing carbon, oxygen yep. in the middle and then helium and hydrogen shell. But the more massive stars can burn that carbon and oxygen in the middle. And so they can end up with more than just two shells. They can have a carbon oxygen burning shell or a neon burning shell or numerous things. You can end up with like seven or eight different shells. Where does it stop? Where does the shell stop? Do you know? Well, we'll come to that in a short slide. Yeah. But eventually they've burnt everything to something they can't get anything out of, yep. and then they either explode and die in one way or another. And so, just to give it a label, main sequence down here, they get the turn off. And so that turn off is from the main sequence, from the hydrogen burning into the inert helium core now. With a hydrogen shell. With a hydrogen shell. Then as the hydrogen shell moves out, you move up the red giant branch. Then you come down to either the red clump or the horizontal branch, where now you've got an inert helium core, core. and a helium shell and maybe a hydrogen shell as well. Then as those helium and hydrogen shells move up, you go up the asymptotic giant branch. If you're a massive star, you might well have more shells, yep. so you could easily have a carbon burning shell. So you could do this a few times almost. Yes, yeah, so up and down, up and down, um, comes up. Then at some point uh, up here, it's become too unstable. It's blown away most of the mass. You're just left with a, a core for low mass stars like a white dwarf.